tonight. What keeps the sharks out of Bondi? Have you ever been under here? Not everyone has what it takes to be a lifeguard. It doesn't get any easier. And between these men, competition runs deep. He's not a lifeguard's bootlace, Rudy. Natalie was carried unconscious from the surf. She's about to learn whether she'll walk again. It's Christmas time when we gather round. Christmas Day is one of the busiest days of the year on Bondi Beach. Merry Christmas! And when everyone else is having the most fun, the lifeguards generally end up most busy. I think like we're probably looking at about 25-30 thousand people down here. 90% uh, of that would have to be tourists. Now, the tourists are down here, they want to celebrate. They want to spend it with all other tourists, so yeah, it's great. It's a great experience for us as well, and we learn, learn so much meeting all these people. Whereabouts are you from? England. Whereabouts? Oxford. Oh, gorgeous. Good to see that nice smile. <laughs> <laughs> the tourists love the sun and the water, but many haven't got a clue about surf safety. It's Christmas. In the afternoons, everyone's had a few beers, just thinking they're a bit better swimmers than they are. They just uh, don't understand the dangers that they, they are faced with at the beach. Today, the lifeguards have to contend with three rips running along the beach. There's plenty of Christmas surprises in store for unwitting swimmers. Chief lifeguard Hoppo and his long-serving mate Corey have seen it all before. Hoppo's lost count of how many rescues he's done, but they've ranged from deadly serious to comic. There's a bloke in the girl. It's the furthest out and right in front of us. Can't champ, you can do it. They've spotted swimmers caught in a rip. I love seeing the great man go in. He doesn't get wet very often these days. And his, his instincts kick straight in. He couldn't help himself. In he goes. Normally, people face the shore when they come in on rescue boards. But Irish tourist Sarah isn't keen on having her rear end in Hoppo's face. No, you won't find that rescue in the textbook, but nonetheless, it looks effective, doesn't it? I'm sure it's a crowd pleaser. I don't think it's love. They're not kissing, are they? Oh, look, she's thanking him, shaking hands and everything. Oh, she did that on purpose. My life. He saved my life. I would have been dead. I did not realise how far I was. I did not realise. She's um, learnt some perks of the job. You've seen them arms. She didn't want to get on. A lot of girls don't like getting on with the guys because when they're on the front, you pretty much your face is on their backside. So it makes it a lot, a lot harder to paddle. But we got her in in the end. But it's more a comical sort of thing than, than a standard rescue. The Christmas bug. 40,000 people. Could it get any worse? Probably. Tomorrow's Boxing Day, it's another day altogether. <laughs> oh well, here we go again, eh? I think we've got a restart for something big going on. Remember last week, 17 year old Natalie Whelan was pulled unconscious from the surf. Senior lifeguard Dino treated it as a possible spinal injury. Dino learnt Natalie may have suffered a fit in the water. Yeah. And that's what you think it is? Your heart rate is flying in a situation like that. You are so nervous, you, you don't want that person to die. Dino and the boys stabilised Natalie before she was taken to St Vincent's Hospital. Scores of people have become disabled after surf accidents on Sydney's beaches. It's 
says 15. Mm, okay. Will Natalie be one of them? Trent's especially anxious. He'd invited Natalie to the beach in the hope of a reconciliation after breaking up with her. We were uh, quite far out. There's this big-ass wave and both went under and I came up and then she came up a couple of seconds later like, on her back and, yeah, just eyes closed and <laughs> not really doing much, so grabbed her head and pulled her up. The good news is Natalie has feeling in her fingers and toes. Now it's time to examine now her neck. The off. What I want you to do is very gently rotate your head towards me and put your chin on this shoulder. All the way over. Good. Lift your chin and point it towards the ceiling. Lift your head up. That doesn't hurt? No. Excellent. Alrighty. I was able to ascertain just by examining her that uh, her neck wasn't in danger. I know. What happened? <laughs> You're in crying. Yeah, Mum, okay. always crying. It's OK. So what happened? Tell me. I have no idea. The lifeguards are really reassuring. They sort of talked me through all the steps and what was happening and made sure that I was kept conscious and I weren't too bad looking either, so that was all right. A spinal injury's been ruled out. So what did happen to Natalie in the surf? I thought immediately that she just had a fit in the water, and this is scary. In the water, it's a problem because she can't breathe, so someone always has to be with her in the water, and she knows that. But Natalie's now certain she didn't suffer an epileptic fit. I know when I'm about to have one and, when I, and afterwards when I do have one. Um, and I know I didn't, so I told them that. Hours after the accident, Natalie's beginning to remember exactly what happened. When her memory finally returns, it's not what anyone guessed, but just as dangerous. At St Vincent's, Natalie's been under observation for several hours. It's unclear what happened to her in the surf at Bondi. Lifeguards, her mum, even doctors all thought she'd had an epileptic fit. But now Natalie finally remembers. Something hit me on the head. On the head, yeah. okay. Something solid hit Natalie in the surf and knocked her out. A CT scan was ordered to look for any damage to her skull or brain. I don't like anything to do with the brain. I get a bit nervous because sometimes you can get bleeding on the brain at night and you don't even feel it. You okay? I'm so worried about you. <laughs> An anxious night lay ahead for Natalie and her mum. Many of the lifeguards grew up at the beach and came through the local surf clubs. They joined when they were kids and emerged as elite watermen. Guys, can you return to the beach? You're just stuck in a rip. You're not going to go anywhere trying to fight it. They know almost every rip and every rock at Bondi. Now they're paid professionals. Yeah, but each like year, if they want to keep their jobs, they've got to prove they're up to it. <laughs> Test number one, do the distance in the pool. 800 metre swim, under 13 and a half minutes. Bit of nerves kick in and stuff. I don't know how they're going to go on the day. The fastest of these ocean men did the 800 in a speedy 9 minutes and 40 seconds. I hate the swim. It doesn't get any easier. If anyone goes over to 13 and a half, that's, they've failed, and then they don't continue down to the beach. At Bondi, it's a bitterly cold winter's day. Water is 15 degrees. Ready? Go. Test number two, an Ironman endurance competition. 600 metre surf swim, two 600 metre runs on the sand, 600 metre board paddle, and a series of demanding rescues. Two guys have pulled out so far, so... First aid tests come later, but fail here, and their jobs are on the line. It was every bit as hard as I thought it was going to be. I'm really looking forward to the results coming through, and I'm really looking forward to seeing if I've got a start. Of 30 competitors, four don't make the grade. Maybe next year.
the lifeguards have won a place on the team, but the competition's not quite over. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of competitiveness. Everyone wants to be a good lifeguard and everyone wants the guys they work with to be comfortable with your ability. Mate, physique, hairdo, style, clothes, you name it, mate. We compete in every area, basically. The job attracts sort of um, people who don't, who, who don't realise that there's a lot more goes into it than just parading up and down the beach and, you know, looking at good-looking chicks all day and... Corey Adams, the longest serving lifeguard on the team. Corey's a former first grade footballer from Maroubra. He's cast from a vintage Australian mould where newcomers must prove themselves before they're accepted. Corey, you learn the hard way with him. Yeah. It's his way or the highway with Corey. <laughs> you know, I don't see myself as a hard man. I just think I'm someone who's pretty principled and you're pretty right, I won't back down to anyone. Reedy's the new kid on the block and Corey doesn't let him off lightly. Oh, he loves me. Loves me. Absolutely loves me. Reedy's a total imposter. He's a pest. Got a head full of cauliflower. I understand where he's coming from because I come from that world. Where the old blokes, they never told you anything positive and you'd lift your game and you'd try and show them how wrong they were, you know? Oh, man. Told me, just taught me just to, you know, smile and turn the other cheek. I mean, now, why would I let it get to me? I used to be fat and overweight. I used to get written off all the time. Reedy's had two lives. He was overweight at school, then decided he wanted to be someone else. One day I just thought, that's it, you know, like it's just, it's not how I want to live my life. Um, I thought, you know, like I, I, just wanted, I just wanted to lose the weight. I always loved the beach and loved coming down here, you know, but I just always felt uncomfortable taking my shirt off or whatever. But now, I don't think I ever wear one. <laughs> He's not a lifeguard's bootlace, Reedy. He loves these sort of days when it's one foot. The only days he can handle. He loves one foot surf. I think that as long as the job gets done in the end, that, that it doesn't really matter, as long as nobody gets hurt. In a few weeks' time, Corey and Reedy will come face to face in an ocean endurance race. He'd love it. He'd lo especially if you beat me, he'd love it. It wouldn't bother me one bit. Any rivalry between the lifeguards never gets in the way of saving lives, <laughs> as we'll soon see. The rip takes you out. You struggle to get back. Wave after wave crashes in. Unsure which way's up, you get sucked down. You gasp for breath. Fear thumps in your chest. You're going to drown. This man was underwater and drowning when the lifeguards got to him. OK. You're all right, mate. You're all right. Just, you got to stay relax. calm, OK? Just Over relax. the head. Nice and easy. OK? Take yeah, it easy. Mate. Breathe in. Nice, yeah, slightly breathing. breathing. <laughs> nice and slow. I used to go to the wrong side. Right? Oh, yeah. Got a bit of water. Oh, yeah, but it, <laughs> Simon didn't <laughs> swim between the flags. Not only that... You don't know how to swim? No. Nah. Nah. Oh, he, that's why I was yeah. with my mate, and he trying to help me. If you don't and know how to just swim, stay here with me. You should definitely be up between those flags, OK? Yeah. yeah. Fairly dangerous uh, position in the beach to be swimming if you're not a good swimmer. One of your yeah, guys, yeah. he helped me out. All right. I really appreciate that. No, that's all right. Good on you. Yeah. Take <laughs> Thank care. you. Natalie and her mum have spent an anxious night waiting for the CT scan results. Dino rescued Natalie from the surf. He's come to pay a visit. Hello, Natalie. Hi. I'm Dean. How are you? Oh, okay. Much better. Much better? Good, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So it, was, it wasn't epileptic fit? Was no, it wasn't. It wasn't? No. What happened? I remember going underneath the wave and feeling myself hit something, but then not much after that. I got a CAT scan done. Yeah. And I've got a contusion in my brain. Yeah. Like bruising and bleeding and 
the kind of yeah. stuff. So, yeah, it wasn't epileptic, but I just got very yeah. violently hit. As soon as yeah. my friend said, oh, she's got epilepsy, everyone went, right, right, it's a fit. And I was so, like, no, it really wasn't. Yeah. It's kind of hard. Damn, I beat my fist on the table again. My convictions are the fault that I fail to defend. You just pillage and pillage, woman, you won't give in. There's only so many times that I keep trying to stop. The Bondi Skate Bowl opened a year ago and isn't for the faint hearted. The deep vertical sides lay claim to skin, bone, and egos every day. Uh, skate Bowl to um, Bondi Central. An ambulance has already been called for this kid. He might even need some oxygen because he's. Um, I'll just put this over your head. Hey, what's your name, mate? Dale Brennan. Daryl Brennan? Dale. Dale. Okay. Bondi Central. He's 18 years old, mate. He... Suspected uh, injury to the right wrist. Try not to look at it, Dale. It's just caded without looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't even look at it. As the adrenaline subsides, the analgesic gas can't come soon enough for Dale. It's a sympathetic crowd at Bondi. Oh, yeah, we just turned around and noticed the grown man was crying in the bowl, so we figured he was hurt, and then we called the lifeguards and just jumped to attention. They're really good at this part. Harry, better known as H, has seen it all before. He's the oldest on the team. Well, Bondi for me is... It's my home and my home base. Uh, it's a colourful, eclectic mix of every style of person and situation. You know, I've had a, quite a few jobs in my life. I think this would be the best job. Well, no, Rhino to South Corner. He talks about the old days down here, and we sort of only know the new days at Bondi. So H is, yeah, he's good value down here. He's got lots of really good old stories about surfing Indo in the 70s and stuff, but... Oh, I had hair down to my shoulders, so I had a beard to my chest and long, sort of, uh, browny blonde hair. But it was the time, it was the time of hair. Don't swim out there, mate. Can you come back, please? He can drive you mad, but he's got a good heart and he's an iconic Bondi bloke. Back at the skate bowl, paramedics have arrived. All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a needle in you. Have you ever had morphine before? No. Right, Dale's in so much pain, he needs morphine on Sorry. top of the analgesic. You feeling a bit more relaxed? Pain a bit better? Yeah. But the bigger problem is how to get him out. At the skate park, Dale's stuck in the bowl with a broken arm. It's a nasty fracture. It's not a compound fracture. A compound fracture is when the bone actually sticks out of the skin. So they're pretty awful when you see them. Just looked at it and it was just crooked and no, no, not again. Oh, you've done this before? Not the crookedness, uh -huh. but I've cracked it through like the palm. I think we're waiting for uh, some assistance to rescue him out of here because we just we, we're not able to get him out of the bowl comfortably. How's that going, Dale? All right? Okay. Just keep breathing, mate. So we got to do is keep the shoulders of the board parallel at all times, and these accidents just won't happen. The police rescue squads called in to get him out. In minutes, the skate bowl's back to normal. Damn! I beat my fist on the table again. My convictions are the fault that I failed to defend. Last week, a large white pointer was spotted off Bondi. Yatesy's taken some time off to check out the shark nets that protect Bondi from man-eaters. The guy that checks the shark nets hasn't come for a couple of weeks, so um, yeah, we're just going to check it out and see what's down there. Well, I hope I don't see anything, but <laughs> you never know. Sharks. In three weeks of February and March 1935, three young men were taken by sharks from New South Wales beaches, and regular systematic meshing was introduced. Each catch by these intrepid fishermen at Bondi drew crowds eager for a close-up view. Many claimed meshing was a waste of public money. I feel all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm freaking out with my legs over the side here, so <laughs> my whole body in the water is going to be a bit freaky. But... Have you ever 
been under here? Like it's not even that deep here. They go from the bottom about... Wait. The small nets aren't a barrier to the sharks. They disrupt their territorial instincts by inhibiting their swimming pattern across the bay. That's not stopping shit, mate. I'm telling you right now. But I guess it's just there to, I don't know, maybe just put them off their track or something, you know? Like, not, maybe not to catch them, but just a bit of a deterrent. If a shark really wants to visit Bondi, there's not much stopping it. It's up to the lifeguards to be vigilant. After being rescued from the surf, Natalie's back at the beach. Hey, man. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well. You're looking great. Thank you. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm all right. You're all right. Better. Better? You look, you look so much better. I know. Uh, <laughs> I feel so much better. Uh, uh, it's good. She was in a bad way when, when we got out of the water, and it's just great to see her talking, laughing, and, um, you know, it's a bit disappointing what happened to her, but it could have been much worse. She could have been dead. Thought it would be okay, lovely to see you. Thank you so much again. Next on Bondi Rescue, it's party time at Bondi. Lifeguards clean up the mess. Drownings are one danger, drugs are another. And thieves go to the beach too. My wallet, my money, 